Welcome to Care More, Be Better, a podcast for people like you who care about the social impact of conscious companies and everyday heroes. Hear inspiring stories from those who put people and planet before profit and personal gain. You'll learn how you can make a difference, vote with your dollars, and get involved today. Here's your host, Karina Belizzi. Hello, fellow do-gooders and friends. I'm your host, Karina Belizzi. Every week, I invite you to care more so we can create a better world together. This is part two in a three-podcast series dedicated to the concept of a novel technology. This will inspire and support a more regenerative farming movement, and that is a fully electric and autonomous tractor. With this week's installment, I bring you part two of this press event. This time, I got my hands on the much more polished footage taken by Monarch Tractor's team at the press event specifically. You won't hear as much rain in the background, you won't hear as much background noise, and you definitely won't experience the wobble of my simple camera in hand. So I'm thrilled to be able to share it with you. You get to meet a goddess in the farm to table movement and also farm to school movement, as you get to know Alice Waters, She's an acclaimed restaurateur, author, and founder of Shea Panisse Foundation and Edible Schoolyard. Those of you local to Northern California may know her restaurant, Shea Panisse, in Berkeley. Alice Waters' dedication to create a more nutritious world full of delight for our senses is something I deeply admire. I hope one day to have the opportunity to interview her on this show. From there, to round out our understanding of what it can take to bring a concept like an electric tractor to the market, and the advocates that you need along the way to build any new technology that you'll need to make it happen, I think it's important that we hear from one of their first committed customers and a company with whom the Mondavi family may have a complicated relationship. You'll hear more about that in my one-on-one with Carlo. So today you get to see a perspective from the president at Constellation Brands, a company that has many brands of spirits, wines, and beers under their belt. It's a unique story, one that goes a little bit from rags to riches and offers us some unique perspective. You'll also meet the CEO and co-founder of Monarch Tractor, Praveen Penmetza. Each of these contributors provides perspective on this journey into food and to what it will take to build a sustainable future, one in which we can all thrive, enjoy a bounty of food, and one that will ultimately preserve us for generations to come. And because the Monarch Tractor team supplied footage from the event, those watching this on YouTube will even see what it is like to be behind the wheel or as an autonomous participant of that Monarch tractor as it drives out of the facility in Livermore into view of all of us that were there. Now, I did have to cut this a little bit short because, well, they were blaring ACDC in the background, and I'm fully aware of copyright infringements. And at the end of today's episode, after you meet Praveen and get one more glimpse of this tractor, I'm sharing a snapshot of what to expect from our next two episodes, including a surprise. Now I'm going to turn it over to the very capable hands of the MC for the event, Elaine Checken Brown. Here she is. Welcome everyone. My name is Elaine Chacon Brown. I'm a wine writer and global wine educator. And I'm gonna say the thing you're not supposed to say at these events which is that I am feeling emotional. (laughs) This is a big deal. (laughs) And to get a room full of farmers, media, investors, researchers, designers, engineers, all together for this occasion is a historic moment. This effort to bridge this divide, to focus on regenerative farming, to bring food into our communities in a healthy way has been ongoing for decades. And several people here are with us today that have been founders and leaders in that movement for a long time. 
food is the thing that unites us all. It's the essential that we all must have, and that means farming is also an essential that has to be addressed, that has to be respected, and that we have to give solutions to. And I am really thrilled to be able to introduce Alice Waters, who has been a leader here in California that's really truly influenced not just the entire United States, but the world in being aware of the farm to fork movement, the value of healthy food, of supporting local agriculture, and of driving regenerative agriculture. When I was speaking to her earlier today, she mentioned that she actually used to be a Montessori school teacher, which I have to admit I didn't know and she trained in London. And when I found this out, it made so much sense because she has more recently taken a strong effort to bring healthy foods to schools to ensure that every student has a healthy meal. And part of how this has happened is through a program that she has brought into schools where each school has its own farm. It's a program called the Edible School Project and there are now 6,000 schools worldwide participating in the Edible School Project. <laughs> Through the Edible School Project, she's actually united her passion for food, for farming, for healthy food, and her uh, background in Montessori schools to truly educate students at the source and help them realize that, again, food is the essential piece of our communities. And so I'm so thrilled, Alice, to invite you to the stage to speak to us today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for giving me such a great introduction, Carla. Thank you, too. But um, this didn't come about because I was looking for healthy food at Chez Panisse. I was looking for taste in the late 60s. And I had gone to France. And I came back and I wanted to live like the France, French. I didn't know at that time that the French were really living in a slow food nation, if you will. All the farmers that came to Paris were only from the north of France. I don't even think they had olive oil in Paris at that time. It was all local food and directly brought in by the farmers, distributed through the big layall construction for distributing food in Paris. And very sadly, when that layall disappeared and moved down to the airport, the food in France changed entirely. They started buying food like we did in the 50s. The industrial food system brought food from all around the world. Now I grew up in New Jersey in the late 40s and 50s. And so we only had, you know, food that was seasonally right. And Actually, what I found when I was looking for taste were the local organic farmers in the state of California. And I wanted a farm to buy all my food from that was, could grow it and we could have that connection. And my father decided to go all around California, visit the organic farmers and find one that could grow food for Chez Panisse. Well, we were lucky because he found Bob Kennard, and maybe some of you know about him, but he was a regenerative biodynamic farmer before anybody was, was knowing about that. And it was so beautiful because my father saw he was, my father had a victory garden and had studied agriculture, but he was one of those neat as a pin farmers, everything in rows. And he went to Bob Canards and he said, 
Where is, where's the food? And it was just, he pulled it back, the cover crop, and pulled out a carrot and said, my carrots are more nutritious than anybody else's, and they taste better. And so he brought those carrots back to us, and he said, this, my father, said, this is the only farm that's, farmer that's crazy enough to work with you. <laughs> and he educated us in the most beautiful way. And we started buying the food directly from him, giving him the real cost. So we didn't have any intermediate, you no know, Cisco in between us and the farmer. And so he, of course, was very, very happy that we supported him in this way. And when he told his friends, everybody wanted to sell to Shebanis. And we immediately built a network of probably 70 farmers and ranchers and fishers that we counted on seasonally to provide all of the ingredients for Shebanis. And I have to say that I fell in love with all of those farmers. And coming down here in the rain, I want you to know, it's a testimonial to my love of farmers. I count on, and ranchers as well, who take care of the land for the future of this planet. So I just wanted to tell you very quickly, I have a big plant, and I call it school-supported agriculture. What if the public school system decided to buy all of the food for school lunches locally and organically and regeneratively? What if they became the economic stimulus for every state in this country? Just imagine what would happen. And to have students connected, like we were connected with Bob, we go right out to the farm. He had events at the farm. Bob talked about what he was doing and why he was doing it. We got him to plant special things for us. And he got us to eat nettles and purslane. We make best nettle pizza around. But what I want to say is that we, of course, all eat, and our children all go to school or should. And what a universal place to make a dramatic change that could affect immediately the climate and the health of all of us, to eat food that is really picked when it's ripe. That's where the taste is. So thank you. And thank you, especially those farmers, but thank you for inventing this <laughs> wonderful tractor that will help our farmers and our butterflies. It's really great. And the idea of school-supported agriculture, I might say, is not just about buying that food, but it's really getting to know the people who grow it. And they are really my best friends. Thank you. It, uh, it really is an honor to have a moment to share the stage with you, so thank you. I, I, I've decided that my getting emotional while public speaking, it makes me charming, so you'll just all have to be charmed by it. <laughs> um, but Alice, I love your statement that all, really all of us being here today in the rain is a testament to our love for food and for farmers. And we have to remember that farming is about people and food is about all of us. And we have to make it possible to make 
this work possible. Standing up here looking out across the, the room, the tent of people, I can see there are people with farms of all sizes, small family farms, larger corporate farms as well, everything in between, and across different types of agricultural crops as well, and it's really quite inspiring to see that. For something like Monarch Tractor to have an impact, one of the companies that has stepped forward with strong interest in Monarch Tractor is Constellation Brands, which is a global company and one of the world leaders in beer, wine, and spirits. And I'm thrilled today to introduce Robert Hansen, <laughs> president of the Wine and Spirits Div Division of Constellation Brands. Hello, everybody. Elaine, that was, that's one of the best introductions I've ever had. I promise you. <laughs> I was actually going to start with you, Elaine. I'm going to go a bit off script, uh, Carlo and Praveen and Mark and Elaine, so bear with me for one second. Because I was really inspired listening to your opening comments. I grew up in Sonoma County. I was a kid from the other side of the tracks. Um, and uh, just, Carlo, your comments about the environmental impact and just the reality of how, what you see happened in Santa Rosa, which is my hometown, and have had family and friends impacted by those fires. The commitment that you have from a passion standpoint to be a part of a change, which is so essential to our world, is important to me personally. Elaine, you know, you talked about being emotional. I think some of the most underused skills in life and aspects of being a human being is bringing passion and love and a commitment to affecting change, as you spoke about, Mark, to what we do in business. Um, and then for all the farmers out there, personally, I'll, I'll share with you, I come from a big family. I have uh, had uh, nine aunts and uncles. 50% uh, of them were lawyers, and no offense to any of the lawyers in the crowd if you're here. I liked the other 50% a lot better. They were all farmers. <laughs> so there you have it. That's a little bit of, uh, about me. But the, the reason we're really here, I, I met Praveen and Carlo a couple years ago at a drink that we had at the Archer Hotel in Napa. And part of what I'm trying to change with my colleagues in the wine and spirits business that are here with me today, including our chief operating officer, Sam Glatzer, who runs our global operations, is to be decisive and really change the company from what it had been to being a, a company that's super committed to farming in the right place and creating an incredibly well-crafted product of the highest quality and recognizing that we can't sustain that unless we're committed to farming in the right way. Without water, without healthy land, without the ability to have incredibly built products that taste amazing, that people want to consume, we don't have an industry in the future. And as we sat that uh, evening and had a gla shared a glass of wine together, hearing the idea and their passion for really changing this industry and the impact it could have on the world in which we live, we just said yes. We were introduced by Andy Erickson, one of our amazing winemakers, and I think Carlo and Praveen were a little surprised because they're like, hmm, that's not necessarily the Constellation brands we know, um, but you just said yes to being our first partner and committing to buy six of the Monarch uh, and uh, Founder Series MKV tractors because it was just the right decision to take. Because here's the thing about what we're trying to accomplish. We believe that business not only has to be a source of economic opportunity, you all need to be able to make livings and feed your families uh, and uh, prepare your children for a future, et cetera, as Carlo talked about earlier, and to do so in a healthy planet. But we believe business can not only be a source of economic opportunity, it has to be a force for positive change in the world. And I found a home in a company that really fundamentally feels that. And that's important because I've worked in places where that hasn't been the case in the past. And it was just the wrong home for me. Um, why we're so excited about this partnership is these first six tractors are going to be used to help farm uh, our collectively, given the heritage of the Mandavi family with Constellation Brands, uh, our amazingly world-renowned Toklan Vineyard. Uh, all of our uh, vineyards are uh, sustainably farmed. Uh, the Tokelon Vineyard's going to actually be organically certified uh, in the, with the spring budding in 2023. And to be able to bring these six tractors, 
uh, to be able to bring these six tractors to the Toklan Vineyard, uh, it's sort of serendipitous, Carlo. I think it honors the amazing accomplishment of your family and your grandfather to have, have put Napa Valley on the global stage of one of the most important places where high-quality wines come from. But to be able to use the tractors on the Tokalon Vineyard uh, as we organically certify it uh, and to be a part of the change that you're driving is really exceptional for, for us. We're committed, obviously, to water preservation, but also to reduce our emissions. And to hear the statistics that they talked about and what the impact of this would be, and to be able to convert over time our entire tractor fleet to electric, and to think about how we're putting back health into the soil to create the kind of future that you spoke about is really, you know, essentially what we're committed to. It's also really important for all the farmers in the audience to understand that we don't think that we can continue to produce like incredibly well-crafted wines unless we really change the way we farm. And to farm this way in the future, uh, we have the Tokalon Vineyard is, you know, the top five vineyards in the world. Uh, and, you know, we're proud we, you know, we had, we were, Double Diamond is one of the brands that uh, sources grapes off of Tokalon. It was just named the number one uh, wine brand of 2022 on Wine Spectator. More importantly to me personally is Robert Mondavi Estates Cab was named number six, and that's also farmed off of Tokalon Vineyard. But if you bring the whole thing full circle, it's not possible to sustain that unless we do what we're going to do together. And so we're so honored to receive the first six keys of your Founder Series tractors uh, and to recognize that we have a responsibility as a leader in the industry to show the way. And we're hoping that we can not only be your first partner um, with these six tractors, but to actually be the catalyst for our peers in the industry and, frankly, any, any uh, industry that farms to be able to follow our lead and partner with you moving forward to really change the world. So it's an honor. And with that, I'll turn it back over to you, Elaine, but it's really an exceptional thing you're doing. Thank you. I want to remind all of us that are here today that we influence each other. We have the ability to influence those around us by not only talking about what we've learned and witnessed today, but also talking about why what we're witnessing today matters and at the role each of us can take to expand that change and expand that improvement. And so with that in mind, I'm thrilled to Welcome to the stage, co-founder and CEO of Monarch Tractor, Praveen Pinmetsa. For almost, for almost two decades, Praveen has been translating creative vision into delivery of a product, which is, and we're witnessing yet another example of that today. He has worked with companies from startups to Fortune 50 companies and has been invested in working in the ag tech solutions space since 2016. He has really quite a remarkable story about his history in farming, his work with um, the global uh, farming crisis and finding solutions for remote communities, and, and his work in other technology um, spaces as well. So I'm thrilled to, to welcome Praveen. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Elaine. Uh, again, today we have heard from Alice, we have heard from Carlo, uh, we have heard from Robert on how important it is with the farmers and the food ecosystem. Today, more than ever, for the first time, food security is a new word that has come into the fore, forefront of our lexicon over the last couple of years, and especially with the Ukraine war. But also keep in mind that our food ecosystem has been under pressure for a very long time. I want to share a small story of how Zachary and I, when we took that small red tractor to India, and we showcased it to the Indian farmers there, and we said, here is an electric tractor that is going to make farming sustainable. It's going to help you with your diesel fuel costs. The farmer had three very basic questions. The first question was, who's going to drive it? And I was like, wait a second, what are you talking about, right? You're the farmer, you're going to drive it. And they're like, no, there's only two drivers in the whole village who can drive the tractor, and it's a very skilled operation. The second question that they had was, how is this going to save money for me and make more money for me? 
very clear-cut questions that the farmers had. And what we found out, Zachary and I, on that day, was the farmer, and this specific farmer had only four acres of land, was growing fruits and vegetables. And when we asked him about his motivation, he said, the whole point is I want to make enough money to send my kid to college so that he can get away from farming because there is no future in farming. I want to repeat what he said, right? He said, I want to educate my kid with the money that I make from my four acre farm so that my kid can do something else because there is no future in farming. We've all talked a lot about how important our food is. We've all realized it even more over the last couple of years. But farmers around the world are really struggling. We all know that the data is now coming out that less than half of them actually make any money in farming. And not only that, we have also realized that now we have to transition this to a sustainable way of conducting these operations. Because we have heard from Alice, we have heard from Carlo on how the food that we eat is impacted by the climate and the way we farm. So with that in mind, right, it's amazing that on this day, and thanks to the support of a wide variety of partners who are in the crowd today, and that's a combination of federal and state agencies that have joined us today, whether it's David from the California Energy Commission, who's here, whether it's our local state uh, government officials, whether it's the California Air Resource Board, global equipment partners like Case New Holland, who are here, whether it's some of the largest thought leaders in farming, we all have a duty to not only showcase that it is possible to farm profitably, it is pro uh, possible to farm sustainably, and we have to showcase that. And that whole challenge starts here, starts today. So let's, uh, let's all take a look and see what these tractors look like. So let's pull the tractors out. So please hold position and uh, let's see uh, these tractors roll off from this beautiful factory. driver optional, and you've seen one with the driver and one without, all electric smart tractors, and these are going to bridge between farm profitability and our food ecosystem sustainability. So thanks a lot for everybody for joining us. I want to hand it to you. Thank you for joining me on part two of this adventure. To learn more about Monarch Tractors, visit our show notes for direct links. Next week, while I was thinking of taking a break for the holiday, I have decided to share an interview I conducted with John Rulak for another podcast that I host. John Rulak is a regenerative agriculture advocate, pioneer in the world of superfoods and hemp, and he also happens to be the executive producer of Kiss the Ground, a film dedicated to supporting our soils, drawing down carbon, and ensuring the future health of people and planet. This is my holiday treat for all of you while we await the final production of my one-on-one -on -one interview with Carlo Mondavi, co-founder of Monarch Tractor and Rain Winery. That episode will air as the conclusion of this three-part series on January 4th, 2023. If you are enjoying this series, please subscribe and write us a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen or watch, even on YouTube. You can also visit caremorebebetter.com for resources, show notes, and a bounty of episodes on topics like regeneration, sustainable living, and leaving a more positive footprint on our planet. While you're visiting our site, I would love to hear from you. You can leave me a voicemail on the site by clicking the microphone icon in the bottom right-hand corner, or you can just leave me an email note. Thank you now and always for being a part of this pod and this community, because together we really can do so much more. We can care more. We can be better. We can regenerate Earth. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Care More, Be Better, a podcast for social good. To make sure you never miss an episode, subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to podcasts. 
and share with your friends to help us reach more people and spread more social good. 